this is the energy density as per the planck's law of radiation okay so that is epsilon lambda into d lambda equal to 8 by hc divided by lambda to the power 5 into 1 divided by e to the power hc by lambda kt minus 1 into d lambda already i have told you as wavelength increases the energy density is observed to be lesser okay that means in the higher wavelength region the energy density emitted by the body will be lesser okay so it is inversely proportional to lambda to the power 5 and also a term lambda is also in the exponential part so both terms will decide the energy density as a function of lambda and you can observe here in the higher wavelength region energy density will be lesser okay so it is inversely proportional to lambda to the power 5 that is what this particular equation says about the energy density emitted by the the radiation source next we will feel uh, we'll find out what happens to this planck's law of radiation in the shorter wavelength region and in the higher wavelength region and they lead to two major laws of radiation called rayleigh jeans law and the wien's law okay so rayleigh jeans law is giving you the energy density as a function of frequency and wavelength also so what happens to planck's law of radiation in the low frequency region we have to find suppose we have the radiations of low frequency for low frequency radiations h nu is going to be very very less than kt okay if frequency of the radiation is very small in a room temperature let us take at a finite temperature then definitely h nu is going to be very very less than kt then h nu by kt will be less than 1 okay that ratio h nu by kt will be very very less than 1 then what you have to do you expand the term e to the power h nu by kt as a power series and neglect the higher order terms and those higher order terms are negligibly small they are very very small so what this gives exponential to the power h nu by kt is given by 1 plus h nu by kt plus h nu by kt the whole square plus h nu by kt the whole cube like that it will run until the infinite series it is a power series so in mathematics you might have studied e to the power x is given by 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus x to the power 4 like that that series runs so exponential to the power h nu by kt is given by 1 plus h nu by kt plus h nu by kt square plus h nu by kt the whole cube etc now neglect the higher order terms because h nu is very small so h nu by kt is going to be very very less than 1 okay if you take the square of the number which is less than 1 that will give you much smaller value so therefore i will consider only first two terms as a some having certain value and all other terms are very very less compared to 1 and therefore this exponential to the power h nu by kt is nearly equal to 1 plus h nu by kt okay then substitute this uh, in planck's law of radiation so we know that planck's law of radiation in terms of frequency is given by the energy density epsilon nu d nu equal to 8 pi h divided by c cube into nu cube divided by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 into d nu substitute for this e to the power h nu by kt as 1 plus h nu by kt so what you will get 1 plus h nu by kt minus 1 1 1 gets cancelled you left with only h nu by kt okay then cancel the terms corresponding to uh, h gets cancelled planck's constant and finally the energy density in terms of frequency is equal to 8 pi kt divided by c cube into nu square into d nu so in the low frequency region the energy density is directly proportional to frequency square square of the frequency and that is called as rayleigh jeans law so this particular law is called as rayleigh jeans law therefore at a low frequency approximation planck's law reduces to rayleigh jeans law okay so rayleigh jeans law says that in low frequency radiation region 
the energy density is directly proportional to frequency square, square of the frequency of radiation. That is called as Rayleigh's law. Much particular case can be understood by expressing this energy density in terms of wavelength lambda. So you know that nu is equal to c by lambda, okay, because velocity is frequency into wavelength. Therefore, frequency equal to velocity by wavelength. So substitute here and then d nu will be equal to c by lambda square into d lambda. Okay, so if you differentiate this equation by taking c as a constant, d nu is equal to derivative of one by lambda is one by lambda square. Therefore, d nu is equal to c by lambda square into d lambda. Okay, substitute here. Substitute for nu and substitute for d nu. Okay, you will get the energy density in terms of wavelength lambda. And that will be equal to 8 by kt for a new square. You substitute c square by lambda square, c square by lambda square into c cube into for d nu, you put c by lambda square into d lambda. So c square into c, c cube, c cube gets cancelled. So if you cancel that c, finally you will come to know that this energy density epsilon lambda will be equal to 8 by kt divided by lambda to the power 4 into d lambda okay so this is religion's law in terms of wavelength. okay so religion's law says that energy density is directly proportional to one by lambda to the power four okay so much decrease in energy density is observed for higher wavelength region for low frequency radiation means it is a higher wavelength radiation frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional so we can observe here so therefore, what you can conclude, for low frequency radiation, this Planck's law reduces to Rayleigh's law. Okay. So at low frequency approximation or at long wavelength approximations, Planck's law of radiation becomes Rayleigh's law. So you can give the validity of Rayleigh's law by taking the Planck's law of radiation. Okay. So what it says. Rayleigh's law is not valid for entire range of wavelength. It is applicable for long wavelength approximation, Rayleigh's law. Okay. In the low wavelength, sorry, smaller wavelength approximation, you will get Wien's law of displacement or Wien's law of radiation. That you will come to know. So finally, what you can conclude is that at longer wavelength approximation, Planck's law reduces to Rayleigh's law. Question may be asked. So what happens to Planck's law at a longer wavelength approximation? You should say at a longer wavelength approximation, Planck's law reduces to Rayleigh-Jeans law. Okay. So in heat, heat and thermodynamics, you may study this Rayleigh-Jeans law in detail, but you should remember Rayleigh-Jeans law can be derived using Planck's law under long wavelength approximation. Okay. So next we'll see what happens to Planck's law if you consider high frequency radiation or smaller wavelength radiation, high frequency radiation is equivalent to smaller wavelength radiation. What happens to Planck's law under high frequency radiation and that leads to Wien's law. Let us see. For high frequency radiations, H nu is greater than Kt. We know that frequency is higher, H nu is greater compared to Kt. Then what happens? Compared to this term one, this e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 compared to this value 1, this exponential term is very large. Therefore, this e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 is nearly equal to e to the power h nu by kt. This 1 is very much smaller compared to this exponential to the power h nu by kt. Substitute this value in Planck's law by considering the high frequency radiation. This is the Planck's law. That is energy density in terms of frequency epsilon nu into d nu equal to 8 pi h divided by c cube into nu cube divided by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 into d nu. So for this term in the denominator, you substitute only the exponential h nu by kt. Substitute there. You will get epsilon nu is equal to 8 pi h nu cube divided by c cube into e to the power h nu by kt into d nu. Okay, so I can write this as exponential to the power minus h nu by kt and other terms as it is. So energy density 
is 8 pi h nu cube divided by c cube into e to the power minus h nu by kt into d nu. So this is called as Wien's law. So Wien's law says that the energy density will decrease exponentially as frequency increases. Okay, frequency increases the energy density will decrease exponentially. That is Wien's law. Okay, therefore at high frequency approximation, Planck's law reduces to Wien's law of radiation. Okay, what happens? Planck's law becomes equivalent to Wien's law under high frequency radiation. Let us express this in terms of wavelength. So in terms of wavelength, you can express if frequency nu is expressed in wavelength lambda, then you can put nu is equal to C by lambda and d nu is equal to C by lambda square into d lambda. Substitute here, you will get energy density as a function of wavelength lambda epsilon lambda into d lambda equal to 8 pi hc divided by lambda to the power 5 into e to the power minus hc by lambda kt. We have substituted nu is equal to c by lambda. And for d nu, we have substituted c by lambda square into d lambda. Okay. Finally, you will get the expression epsilon lambda equal to 8 pi hc divided by lambda to the power 5 into exponential minus hc by lambda kt. So this is called as Wien's law in terms of wavelength. Okay. So what happens uh, at shorter wavelength? At shorter wavelength, the Planck's law of radiation reduces to Wien's law of radiation. So this is also called as Wien's fifth power law. Okay. So what happens at shorter wavelength region? At shorter wavelength region, Planck's law of radiation reduces to Wien's fifth power law. Okay. So energy density will be inversely proportional to lambda to the power 5. And also it is having exponential term like this. Okay. So finally, we have concluded two points in the today's class. At longer wavelength approximation, Planck's law of radiation reduces to Rayleigh Jeans law. And at sh shorter wavelength approximation, Planck's law of radiation reduces to Wien's law. Okay, so these two points you have to remember. At higher, sorry, shorter wavelength region, this energy density is inversely proportional to lambda to the power of 5, whereas in the longer frequency approximation, this energy density epsilon lambda is inversely proportional to only lambda to the power 4. Okay, no exponential term. Note the difference between these two. So this is called as Rayleigh Jeans law. And this is called as Wien's law or Wien's fifth power law. You consider this particular graph. This graph shows you the energy density emitted by the certain body as a function of frequency. Okay. And here, Rayleigh Jeans law, Planck's law, and Wien's law, all three laws are represented in this particular graph. You observe here at very low frequency, the Rayleigh Jeans law indicated by this particular curve, this dotted curve. So it shows that the energy density continuously increases with frequency. As frequency increases, this energy density continuously increases. Planck's law of radiation shows that it increases first, then reaches maximum, then exponentially it will decrease. That is in accordance with the Planck's law. If you plot the graph, using the expression given by Planck, whatever we have derived in the previous class, other than graph, you will get same graph like this. If you take Wien's law of radiation, it shows this particular curve, this dashed curve. But in the higher frequency region, this dashed curve will exactly merge with the Planck's law curve. But in the low frequency region, it will not obey Planck's law. But here, at a very low frequency region, this Rayleigh Jeans law curve matches with Planck's law of radiation. That is what we have concluded today. At a low frequency radiation, or for low frequency radiation, Planck's law reduces to Rayleigh Jeans law. Planck's law is equivalent to Rayleigh Jeans law. For high frequency radiation, Planck's law is equivalent to Wien's law. So Wien's law and Planck's law are going to be same at high frequency radiation. Okay, in the intermediate frequency radiation, the 
Planck's law holds good. It gives the complete explanation about the energy density emitted by the source.